we start this UI room and create a new project, like in most other programs, we have the most important functions under the icons at the left. And we can start here with a selection of the analysis standard. And for example, for Eurocall 7, we have quite a number of uh, national annexes predefined. We don't need safety factors for the analysis of the settlement because this is a serviceability limit state, SLS. But in addition, we have the calculation of the bearing capacity of the improved soil. So for bearing capacity, we need different safety factors which are predefined here. And as well, we have older German standards, we have the Swiss standard and the older UNOM for Austria. In the second icon, we have the basic parameters for the analysis, which means we have the depth of the groundwater. We can define the maximum depth for the settlement analysis. Usually, it is calculated to a depth where the load stress, which is decreasing with the depth, will be less than 20% of the overload stress from the soil self weight. And most important, we have the material of the stone columns. They, in most cases, they have a very high angle of internal friction, 40 or 45 degrees. We have the unit weight. The unit weight with buoyancy is calculated automatically as unit weight minus 10, as long as you don't define a different value. And the odometric modulus M for the settlement analysis might be, for example, 120. As an option, we can use uh, rigid inclusions instead of stone columns, which are uh, stiff columns from concrete, for example. And we will see this a little later. And finally, there are different options for the analysis, which are based on the method by Preby. Now, in this survivor, we can define different footings, but the, the footings are calculated one after the other. So this means in the previous method, we don't have a mutual influence from one footing to another. We just calculate each footing with its load, and we only have a constant settlement from a constant load over the footing area. So this means you have one settlement value or a footing independent of the position that we want to, to look at. So we define a footing, which might be, might be a single footing, a rectangular, it might be a strip footing if it is quite long, or we have circular footings and circular ring footings. Optionally, we can calculate an infinite load area for very large slabs, for example. And now, first we can define the distance of the columns. And for example, if we have a distance in X and in Y direction of 1.5 meters, in, under this footing, we would have 16 columns. Now we can change the parameters and uh, re have the result of different numbers of columns. For example, if we start in the center of the, of the footing for the first column in X direction, we would have 20 columns in total. If I start centered in Y direction here, we would have 25 columns for a rectangular grid. And we may use triangular grid, which means that in every rectangle, we have an additional column inserted here. So this way we would have 41 columns, for example. As well, if I use rectangular and, and uh, distance of one or two meters, for example, in both directions, we would have as well 25 columns under this footing. It is possible to use a, a slightly 
additional uh, slightly increased area for the columns if we consider that uh, columns which are only a small distance outside of the footing have an effect as well so a little larger area might be used here with these parameters here we have the parameters of the footing the coordinates the depth and the height and the slope inclination might be defined on and displayed and what we need is a load case combination some load on this footing which might be for example 200 kilonewtons per square meter as i described before it is a, a constant load only centered constant load over the whole footing which is covered by the premium method now for the bearing capacity analysis we need the safety factors so we can select for example the design situation to be permanent temporary or extraordinary and the safety factor is automatically predefined from dead loads or life loads depending on the analysis standard that we have selected so we have 25 columns at this time and then we can define an analysis section so the, the section through a footing defines the parameters of the soil layers and of the columns over the depth so we use one section here the name of a and here we can define the different soil layers that means for any footing that we define here we can have different soil layers and different uh, column diameters for the soil parameters there is a parameter proposal so we can predefine different types of of soil or we can enter the parameters directly so if we have a silt for example with a quite low angle of internal friction and this silt goes down to a depth of three meters and here we might have a column diameter of 50 centimeters for example the next soil layer should be sand for example the depth of seven meters we have an angle of friction of 30 degrees for example uh, what is important is the odometric modulus this for the sand this could be 60 mega newtons per square meter for example and if we look at the previous soil layer with the silt this should be only 20. for this first layer and 60 mega newtons per square meter for the second layer and a third soil layer should be some gravel at the base going to a depth of 20 meters and here we have no columns anymore so time column diameter of zero and a higher odometric modulus and this way the column ends here at the depth of seven meters at the final edge of uh, the final depth of the sand layer now in, in the first approach we can look at the analysis results if we go here to the output with the, the input parameters first we have different soil layers we have the number of columns and finally the diameter of this uh, of the columns over the depth over different uh, soil layers and we have an a ratio of increase of the odometric modulus from the stone columns compared to the ground to the soil layers and what we see here we have the columns going down to the second soil layer and first we calculate the basic improvement value n0 then with 
considering the compression of the columns, we have a factor of N1. And the final improvement factor is N2, which consider the overburden pressure from the soil. So this means that our automatic modulus is improved by a factor of N2, leading to a smaller settlement. And we can see this in the next table. We have first the, the load stress from the foundation, which was first 200 kilonewton per square meter. And this is going down over depth. We see this in the diagram here. The load stress are is going uh, to get smaller over the depth and the superimposed stress from the soil self weight is increasing over depth and the settlement is calculated to the depth where this load stress will be less than 20 percent of the superimposed stress and with these parameters we first calculate a settlement without improvement for this foundation we would have a settlement of 24 millimeters and then with the previous method, we first calculate a settlement for an infinite load area, but with improvement to the stone columns. And then apply a footing factor, which considers the size of the footing, because we don't have an infinite load area, we have only a certain size, and we have a certain number of columns. And this is giving the settlement components over the depth, so we have an improved settlement of only 50 millimeters compared to 24. Now, this is a, the settlement increasing over depth for the non-improved soil and for the improved soil. And in addition, we have the analysis of the bearing capacity. And uh, with the previous method, we have to calculate this uh, soil layer by layer going over the depth to have a combined bearing capacity and the utilization of this uh, bearing capacity must be lower than one so we have a utilization of 0 0.29 and the verification is fulfilled now if this um, settlement reduction would not be enough we can change immediately the footing for, for this section that we are seeing here, or the section for this footing. So we can change the parameters very quickly. If I go to this icon here, I could uh, consider to, to use a triangular grid, for example. So we would have 50 columns under this footing. And this way, the settlement is reduced somewhat more. So we have, again, a smaller settlement than the original case. And if I change the, the section, for example, I could define that in the silt, we have a larger column diameters, 0 0.7 meters, for example. And this is displayed here in the graphic view. And again, it's calculated to have a settlement which is still more reduced compared to the original one. So this uh, this way we can change the parameters very easy for the footing. Let's go back to rectangular for example and for the section for soil parameters for the column diameters and so on uh, to, to find the settlement that we might consider as okay. and to be sufficient for the soil improvements that you want to have. Now, if we look at the parameters of one soil layer, we have also the, the option to change the color material per soil layer, not only the, the global values for the columns, but only for this soil layer. There could be another automatic modulus, for example, if we have um, cemented soil, uh, cemented stone columns, for example. So we can change the, the values here. And then there are the three different options in addition for the calculation. First is to use rigid inclusions. Here we can define the Young's modulus of the 
uh, concrete, the strength FCK, and the safety for material, which is a non-reinforced concrete, for example. And this way we have uh, stiff columns here over the depth, and you see that the foundation stress is not changing. This stress is going to be constant over the, the column length. And we have only very small settlements from the compression of this stiff column. So this leads to a much more reduced settlement. And we have the option if we have a low transferring layer, for example, uh, let's define a new soil layer here with some sand, dense sand, and going to a depth of one meter, we have no columns, column diameter of zero, which means that we here have a low distribution layers and the columns start at a larger depth. And just to show one more effect, uh, to have a smaller column depth, only to six meters here. And if we look at these results, you see that here we have the load distribution, distributing layer between the footing and the columns. And this way we have a kind of punching at the column head, which means that the columns can here punch into this first soil layer and give some additional settlement here which is shown with the asterisk here. And in addition, we may have a punching at the column two, which means if the calculation over the depth is going deeper than the end of the stone columns, and if the, the load stress is higher than the superimposed stress, we have a punching at the column two, which again gives an additional settlement here. So these are the two effects, punching at the column head and punching at the column toe. And here, the rigid inclusions, giving a very small settlement here compared to the original value here. Now, as I explained before, we can calculate several footings at one time. So I could define the, an additional footing here next to the first one with a size of four meters. And here there, there might be a different column diameter of one meter, for example. And we have a, a new load case combination, 150 kilonewton per square meter, for example, being a permanent load with a safety factor of 1.35. And we can as well define an analysis section through this footing. And compared to the first one, we can change the, the parameters. So here we would have a, a silt going to five meters depth, for example and the column diameter of 0 0.6 meters. And then an end depth of 8 meters for this column. So we have different parameters for different analysis sections. And here, for example, we don't have a rigid inclusion. We just have normal stone columns. So we can change this. in the soil layer parameters for this analysis section. You can as well double click the footing and define a, a second load case combination, 210 and DSP, for example. So these different footings are calculated separately with no mutual influence. And if we switch 
through the results, we have first the section A. We have then section one for the footing number two in the, with the first cloth case combination, giving a reduction of the settlement here, bearing capacity. And finally, load case combination two, the higher load, giving a little higher settlement, but which is much improved comparing to the original value. And here again, we have the display of the superimposed stress and the load stress being reduced over the depth and the comp uh, comparison between the settlement without improvement and the settlement with improvement. If you have quite a number of settlement of not of settlements but of uh, footings, you also have an option to look directly at the individual results. So if we use this icon here, we can define which load case to to look at. So with the load case one, we have a settlement of 3.45 millimeters here, and we have 6.7 millimeters at this footing. So in this case, if you have quite a large number of footings, you can look immediately at the different results. So where you have which, uh, which kind of settlement or which size of settlement for the individual footing. 